Welcome back. It is Saturday, April 6th in the MLB. Our five best bets are on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan. Let's recap yesterday, a two and two day, a little bit of a wash, but what was electric? We cashed another hit parlay undefeated on our props. We had the five and oh hit parlay sweep on odds checker. Woo, man, that was good. Albies and Seager made it a no sweat. We certainly appreciate their effort. Speaking of no sweat, Phillies first 17 total. That's opposite of that. They scored like the three and then had to wait till the seventh. We'll take it. Mariners money line. I swear they had 600 chances to win that game. They didn't even play well. And they ended up tying it in the ninth. It was just pain if you watch that game. And the Giants and Padres nerfy. Just painful. They scored two runs in the first. And I think they combined to score only five. So that was just just a bad one. Well, whatever. Nerf Nation will get back to it. But without further ado, we're going to dive into today's picks. And we have a bunch of uh, action-packed and loaded slate. So if you are new, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Drop a like down below. We've been on a good run in April. Start of the MLB season. we still got a long season ahead of us. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Drop a like. Logan's going to dive back into his favorite pick of the day. And he's got a little bit of a one-and-a-half unit play, if you will. I'm going to let him lead things off. And where are you going, Logan? Yeah, I am going back to the scene of the crime, unfortunately. I stayed up watching that game feeling like I made the right read, uh, but it just didn't work out. I'm taking the Mariners once again on the money line, plus 102 odds on DraftKings, your best value there. Now I'm playing one unit on that. Austin said this is a one and a half unit play because I'm also doing a half unit sprinkle on a player performance double. Now what is that? Go into your book, especially on FanDuel, and you'll see this uh, kind of category. I'm taking Bryce Miller of the Mariners, five plus strikeouts and a Mariners win, plus 165 odds on FanDuel. And I'm putting a half unit on that. When you go to the player performance doubles, you, you get better odds on it than if you were to build it out as an SGP, which would be like plus 150. So just something to look at, you know, if you, if you do have FanDuel. If you have other books, you're still going to get decent plus value on that. Again, I'm playing that for a half unit because... I'm just, I'll explain why I'm doing the player performance double. Well, let's start with the Mariners. Mariners last night just uh, broke, broke my heart. I, they, they teased me with, with a potential because they, they, they look so bad in that game and yet they, they had a chance. If you watch that game last night, you know why I'm running this back. The Mariners played far less than their best and they still came three outs away from going to extra innings. Yesterday they faced Freddie Peralta, the Brewers ace, and str he, they struck out a lot against him. But they gave enough offense down the stretch to make me believe that it was the right read. Now, if they got shut out last night, probably wouldn't have come on here and, and backed them. But they did. They they had enough offense. To, they just collapsed in the ninth inning. Today, they faced D.L. Hall and the Brewers today. And this is obviously an easier matchup than yesterday. D.L. Hall starts for the Brewers, 4.5 ERA and a two whip on the year for that era that whip is considerably high hall went four innings pitch two earned runs two walks and only one strikeout versus the mets in his first start now the fact that he only had one strikeout against the new york mets lineup again kind of tells me something is 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 he really going to be a strikeout pitcher the sample size is not big enough for me to really understand what kind of pitching game dl hall has he's probably not even going to go that deep he's probably going to go maybe four max five innings he just, what I do know though, is that he does not have the strikeout pitches that Freddie Peralta does, has, which that is the Mariners' glaring weakness. This team cannot lay off of bad pitches. They just love swinging at any and anything and everything. Now, sometimes that can be a good thing because you can attack and, and pounce on a, 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 a bad pitcher. But yesterday, fr fastball Freddie kind of had him, had him searching for things. Falling Hall will be the Brewers' bullpen that essentially let Seattle back in the game yesterday. I'm telling you, this this Brewers bullpen is not as solid as you think. They they sold the the game before against Minnesota. They they almost let Seattle snatch that one away from them last night. And I, I just think that bullpen is not very solid. I think Seattle can definitely do some damage once DL Hall comes out as well too. Now for the half unit sprinkle, I'm relying on Bryce Miller today. Miller starts for the Mariners, 7.2 ERA and a 1.6 WHIP on the season. Now those numbers. Uh, obviously inflated from one start. He, Miller's better than that. He had a 4.32 ERA in 2023. And Miller's first start, he still managed to pick up six Ks against Boston. To, today, he gets a Brewers lineup that isn't familiar with him and is 21st in strikeouts. They're not much better than Seattle. I mean, Seattle's bad when it comes to striking out, but Milwaukee, not that much better. And I, I just think we're going to see a good, solid performance out of Bryce Miller today with that bullpen working. They want length out of Miller as well. If you look at his normal K prop, it's set to five and a half for plus money, which I don't hate as well. If you just want to isolate that and say, I don't want to care if, if the Mariners win. Well, five and a half is what you're going to have to get that one at. It's, it, if, if plus money, I like it. 
I expect also better from the Seattle bullpen today. Now, what I saw last night from Andres Munoz, one of the best relievers in the game, that was not him. I mean, come on, walking in a run like that just could not. He was getting bad calls from the ump as well. And you know what? I don't complain about that because it's part of the game but i mean they were doing them no favors i think this mariners bullpen will be a lot better today i think bryce miller will be on his game there's no familiarity with him in this brewers lineup too which that's how you attack k props in my opinion you pick a guy that that doesn't have a whole lot of familiarity that can catch him off guard and have a six or seven k type performance i think bryce miller does that today give me the mariners and a one and a half unit split between those two plays i do really like that as my best bet today but austin where are you going for yours I'm going to a late night game, going to Anaheim, where I'm taking the Red Sox and Angels under four and a half runs in the first five innings. About minus 115 on BetMGM. I personally wouldn't play this any higher than about minus 130. I don't see it going down to three and a half. That would be nuts. Four and a half, probably pretty standard line you can get on any book, regardless of when we post this pick. But yesterday, if you were on this identical bet, I'm going to say a prayer for you because you probably are shaking in your boots when I talked about this one because yesterday the Red Sox scored four in the second inning. There was no other runs. And then the fifth inning came in the bottom of the fifth, two outs, bases loaded, and they walked in a run. That is just the worst you can do. And I really think that this is a good spot to go back to it if you were on it yesterday because I like both starting pitchers in their matchups. Now, we're going to start with Garrett Whitlock, who's scheduled to start for the Red Sox. He had his first start of the year. Actually looked really good. Five innings pitched, three hits, one or a run, eight Ks. I think it was against the Mariners, who Logan talked about. They swing at anything and everything. Well, we look at a team like the Angels, another team that's really struggling. And, you know, Woodlock actually, you know, that start and, and spring training looked like a new pitcher from last year. Last year's ERA was about five. But in spring training, like I said, and his first start, he's looked a lot better. And I really think this is a guy coming into his fourth MLB season, figuring things out. And I think he'll be able to have a pretty decent year. And we're not asking for for the biggest game of his of his career. I mean, he's facing the Angels, a team that is ninth, averaging the ninth most strikeouts per game. They also are hitting 194 on the season versus right-handed pitchers, as well as the third lowest on-base percentage. But I mean, we think about Anthony Rendon finally got a hit yesterday. It was a dribbler down the third baseline he had to beat out. At the end of the day, I don't, I'm not really scared of a lot of these hitters in this lineup for the Angels. In fact, most of their good hitters are all righties. So we get a righty on righty matchup, which typically favors the pitcher here. And so I think that we'll see Whitlock be able to hold things down. I'm not asking for a master class, but you no know, two earned runs. I think I can live with that through five. Now, Reed Detmers is on the other side for the Angels, and in his first start, he had a tough matchup against the Orioles. A lefty versus the O's. The O's, one of the best teams hitting lefties. And he went out there, five innings pitch, two hits, one earned run, walked a couple guys, but seven Ks. I mean, he was able to strike out the Orioles, and he was just carrying over what he did to the, towards the end of last year, as well as in spring training, and I expect that to continue. The Red Sox, Look, they might, they don't really have a ton of experience for Stetmers. They saw him once last year, but that was right at the beginning of the year, and they only got two earned runs on him in six and a third. And obviously, he's a much better pitcher, in my opinion, from the beginning of last year, last April, than he is this April. And this is a Red Sox team I'm just not really honestly too scared of. I believe Devers did get a little bit banged up last night. I expect him to play, though, tonight. The Red Sox, ninth lowest slugging slugging percentage against lefties through seven games. They have a decently high batting average, but they're all singles. So if you're just going to try death by a thousand cuts, I don't really think that's the way to beat Detmers. He has the put away pitches. Boston, seventh most Ks per game as well. And Detmers, like I said, can get those put away pitches there too. So when I look at both these two pitchers, they have an earned runs line sitting at two and a half of both plus at least plus 100 or plus 120 on the over. So if we can get two earned runs from each of these, we'll probably cash. We just need the deep defenses to not do some wonky stuff but then today i just don't trust either of these two offenses they had a lot of runs yesterday 14 combined total runs a lot of action in the bullpens where they think there was a grand slam but at the end of the day i like detmers like whitlock i think they can hold things down keep us under four and a half in the first five innings so that is going to be my favorite pick of the day but logan you got another for the kids where are you going yeah i'm going out to cincinnati for it i'm taking the reds team total over four and a half minus 105 odds on on beta espn or ESPN bet is your best value there. Now, I the the Reds, I know we have a lot of Reds fans in chat. I, anytime I pick against them last year, they always have my head on a stick. But if you had the Reds yesterday, you had a tragic display of offense. Not what you wanted at all. And this is a system play for me. When I watch a, what I think is a better offense, just stink it up the prior uh, night before, I usually go back to it the, the next day. The Reds went 0 for 11 with runners in scoring position yesterday, 12 left on base. That's terrible. That is just, and they still managed two runs, uh, even given how bad they were with runners in scoring position. Today, 
Yesterday they had Quintana, which to me is one of the better pitchers in the league. Today they get a favorable matchup against Luis Severino. Severino starts for the Mets, 5.4 ERA and a 2.2 whip on the season. That whip, pretty high. And that's kind of what he, what uh, Severino is. It's Last year his whip was pretty high too. If you look at his first start, he went five innings pitch, allowed six earned runs to the Brewers. This Reds offense playing at home could easily get to Severino. It's not out of the realm of possibility. What they did yesterday, I think, will prove to be an anomaly. Reds are hitting 256 versus righties this season. 10th in hits, 10th in runs scored per game. This is a top 10 offense, especially playing at Great American Ballpark today. Yesterday, the, the Reds let the Mets off the hook. And, and today, they have a chance at revenge against a worse pitcher that makes a lot of mistakes. If you never watch Luis Severino pitch, he just hangs a ton of pitches. He just he walks a lot of people. There will be chances today. Cincinnati, you can atone for your sins yesterday and get and get back on, on track today against Luis Severino. Severino allowed a total of 23 home runs in 19 games pit, he pitched last season. Last season, 6.65 ERA for this guy, for Luis Severino. I'm telling you guys, I don't know what sort of length the Mets are trying to get out of him, but the longer he goes into the game, the more mistakes he'll make. Last note, the, the wind is blowing out to right field in Great American Ballpark. Should be favorable conditions for hitting. As long as the wind isn't blowing in in that stadium, I do like it, but it's, it should be blowing out. There should be home run opportunities for sure in this one. I like the Reds to bounce back in a big way today, especially the offense. So give me their team total as my second pick of the day. But Austin, normally we go to the Nerfy Nation segment. We do not have one uh, for the kids today. Instead, we have a hip parlay, and and I'll let you lead it off for that one. Yeah, before we dive into the hip parlay, I do want to note, it is Jake Fraley bobblehead night. So if you want to back him in some way, you certainly can. Maybe he launches one into the stands. Hopefully, uh, Mr. Fraley gets it done. Hopefully, he's in the lineup because he has not been in the lineup the last few days. But like Logan said, no Nerfy Nation today. Yesterday, obviously, a heartbreaker. It's not like we're afraid to take a Nerfy. We're going to keep running them. But there is not one that we really like today. And as I said a couple days ago, we're not going to force a Nerfy when there isn't one we like. So we'll take the day off and instead provide you a hit parlay, which we're 5-0 on them this season. This is not odds checker hit parlay. It's going to be in the video. I'll talk about it in two seconds. But maybe if this one doesn't fail, if this one fails, then Odd Checker might just have the special sauce. But the one we're going with today, and I'll put up both legs. Logan will talk about the second guy. Ever heard of Mookie Betts? Yeah, he's pretty decent. We're taking him to get a hit. And you look at him. I mean, he's facing Jordan Wicks and the Cubs. And honestly, I don't think you can go wrong back in Mookie hitting 429 versus lefties this season. On the season, the, or versus lefties. And on the season, he's hitting a ridiculous 447. I mean, this guy's been insane on the road. He's the number one guy. So you're going to see him get plenty of pitches to hit, especially with Otani and Freeman right behind him and Wicks also struggled a little bit more versus righties than lefties that's why we're back at bets today instead of maybe Otani or Freeman don't mind either of those two guys we did consider Freddie but we're just gonna back Mookie I think he get us one hit and then Logan I'll let you talk about Mr. Jose Altuve and while we're backing him tonight yeah Jose Altuve is the second leg he faces John Gray and the Rangers today look at Altuve he's seeing right righties really well this season he's batting 409 versus right-handed pitching on the season he's hitting 344 as a batting average that's a guy I want to put in my hit parlays especially because last year Jose Altuve terrorized the Rangers hitting 313 in Globe Life Field last year it was weirdly enough his home away from home he he had ridiculously well at Globe Life Field so again that's where he'll be uh, batting today and the best part about both these hitters that I like is that they're both batting leadoff on the road. They get a guaranteed nine innings of at-bats. So even if they're 0 for 3, there's still a chance for them to get another bat, uh, you know, in, in the ninth inning or even maybe potential five plate appearances. So I really do like this hit parlay. As Austin mentioned, no nerfy today. And the problem you get on weekends with, with these, uh, we're, we're in the fourth and fifth pitcher in these rotations. So you get some really questionable pitching. That's not really what I want to do when we're back in these nerfies. We want some really solid looks. And we'll, we'll get Nerfy Nation the next time we find a good look. But I really do like this hit parlay. Hopefully you can cash it. Yep, hopefully we can move to 6-0 and on them this season. And uh, I do did forgot to mention at the top of the show, tomorrow will be a Logan-only video. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I will be on my way to Dallas. We'll actually be at Globe Life on Tuesday. So either way, you guys have a wonderful Saturday. NBA picks will be posted in a little bit. And we had a clean sweep over there. So definitely want to go check those out. No odds checker hit parlay today. Meant to mention that at the top of the video. We only do this Monday through Friday. Which is why we put one at the end of today's video. But let's have a wonderful day. Go Mariners. We need a win. I'll see you guys back again tomorrow. Peace.